Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of BC Buckets. I'm Matthew Bruning. Joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. And Colin, today on our Scouting Report series, we are going to have Cason Wallace of Kentucky coming in at six foot three freshman, uh, 19 and a half years old. Um, an intriguing prospect. I watched a ton of Kentucky this year, and Kentucky obviously had a really up and down year, weird season with a lot of things going on, whether it's Severe Wheeler falling out of the lineup, Oscar Shibway still there. Uh, they had no shooting in a lot of lineups. <laughs> Uh, but still average 11.7 points per game, four and a half assists, four rebounds, two steals, uh, 45% field goal percentage, 35% from three, 76 from the line. Where do you want to start with Case and Wallace? Uh, I think right away we just go straight into what he does very well. I, mean, I, yeah. his, I think he is the best defensive prospect in the draft in terms of what's already done. Like he's polished. Well, I, Wemby, I'm behind, not saying, you know what I'm saying? Behind victim of Miyama. Well, Wemby is he's just by himself. We're just, <laughs> okay. Okay. I, like, like if I say who's the best scorer, you're gonna go, well, probably Wemby. It got stuck <laughs> in my head. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. You're fine. So the best in terms of defensive impact. Guard. How about defensive guard? Sure. Because I don't know wing wise, there's we just you Koulibaly, Thompson's. See, but the thing that go ahead is I you when I watch those players, the Koulibaly and w- repair, whatever, those big long guys. I think that Case and Wallace has a different gear on the defensive end in terms of where he just instantly, you know, he can cause a turnover where you're like, how did he just cause a turnover there? He, I mean, his rotation ability is crazy. Denying the ball in pick and rolls is crazy. Getting through screens. I mean, he just makes winning plays. He makes just stuff happen, which is why I think he is the most polished defensive prospect outside of Wimby. Outside of Wimby. Um, oh, whereas uh, Cool Bali, I think, use their, uses their athleticism and their length to to disrupt on defense whereas i think you know case Wallace is six two he has a six eight wingspan but i think that he is insane in terms of what he's able to make happen yeah i, I think that's that's a really fair point because i honestly hadn't thought much about comparing him to those wings because uh obviously right. they're different players but um yeah the defensive intensity is obvious uh his hands are incredible the he's just a smart help defender so he's always in position even though he's not that tall uh, or he's not tall enough to really you know block shots per se he has really he's able to contest shots really well um in a lot of different areas um overall just him being a really smart player on the court it just shows in a a ton of different ways on both sides of the ball i just you you get a feel when he has the ball when he's guarding the ball when he's on the court that he's going to make the right play and that that really holds a lot of weight to me Mm-hmm. Um, if we continue with him, uh, if we look at his offensive side of the ball, there's really, I don't, there's, there's not a lot of weaknesses per se, but there's not a ton. There's not a lot of like super projectable strengths. Right. Right. That's where it's kind of a middle ground on offense. It's like a lot, some people that's where you'll get some people that are really high on him. Some people are low on him. It's all about kind of how he develops in those basic, like, off the dribble situations more so, but still uh, I think he's going to be a fine shooter. I think he'll be able to shoot 35 plus percent at the NBA level. Um, He shot 64% at the rim, which I think has showed his quickness and ability to get, um, get to the basket and his passing was, was top tier. I think 24 and a half assist percentage on a team that had very little spacing. Um, Oscar Shibway, Jacob Toppin, you know, just, some some players that were good, and then Case and Wallace was kind of the lead dog there, right? Um, I actually, I think I did. I guess I disagree with you on on his weaknesses. I think he has a lot of offensive weaknesses. So um, what are those? I don't think he can break anyone down. So if he's going to be obviously six two, that that limits you to two spots on the floor. You're going to be a one or a two, and I don't think he has the creation ability to be a one. Uh, the passing, I guess. Could be, but I don't. But in terms of his shot and stuff like that, and his aggressiveness, I think he has the athleticism to get to the rim. But I don't think he's the aggressiveness to want to get to the rim. Um, was where I don't think he can be a one. He can't be a two. I think one because he's a little shorter. I don't think his his three is ideal right now. So that's where it's 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 hard for me to. And I think he started he started the season good, forty point eight percent from from three, but it ended pretty bad, and. Obviously, you want to take what the player can do well, but I think it's hard for him to car to use his, to have his defense show if he's not able to go on the floor in an ideal role. 
because he's not going to, I don't think he's going to be primary playmaker ever in his career. It, it is interesting because he's kind of like, we talk about tweeners a lot at the forward position. Right. He's kind of a tweener at the guard position in a lot of ways to where you'd like him to be 6'5". Uh, and then if he was 6'5", it would make a lot of sense just for to put him at the two. Um, I do think with the spacing of the NBA, his quickness on the ball will allow him to get to the rim in ways that in college you can't because he's playing with Oscar Sheboy and he's playing with like non-shooters. Right. The spacing of the NBA, I think, lends itself to where he doesn't have to have the deepest bag. Because I agree, he's not great in one in isolation situations. He's just not. But there are times where you can just catch and go in the NBA mm-hmm. and make get to the rim because he is so quick. And I think that that will help him, you know, project to be able to to score in more ways than just being a spot up shooter. Um, you're right, though, in terms of the shooting off the dribble, and I, which I did mention, um, it didn't. You know, he wasn't out here hitting two dribble pull ups or like step back mid range jumpers. Like he wasn't doing that. So you have questions to how much he can really self create for himself. But overall, I, I still think those are some things. Those are things that can kind of develop in the NBA where you have a lot yeah. of reps and he'll be a top 12, 11, 10 pick and he'll have opportunities to do that uh, at the next level. I just think he's so smart and he has such a good feel for the game and he's such a great defender. Like he'll figure it out. We've seen it with Davion Mitchell at the Kings. That's where true. Damon Mitchell's a good I didn't player. even have that comp written down, but I just came up on the top of my head. <laughs> great comparison because you're getting a late defender um, that is kind of an undersized guard, good shooter, not great, can kind of create for himself, but is more reliant on his quickness. That is kind of where I see Casey Wallace fitting in. Yeah. I mean, a comp for me, I mean, you mentioned Davion Mitchell. I don't know. I don't know not your actual comp, but I think a Marcus Smart is like That's the true. ideal player. I think it's a yeah. guy that. Instant, like in any any team would love to have him just because he makes teams win, and I feel like he does a lot of that for the Celtics. Yeah, I think that's a good that's a good one. I didn't have that written down for some reason. Uh, I had Mike Conley written down, which Ooh. I understand he's not he's not a true point guard, but Mike Conley's not breaking people down one on one, right? He's a very very good defender, elite defender, borderline. Uh, obviously, better passer than Kaysen was or is. But I, if, if we're talking about the on-ball potential, I could see a Mike Conley. Okay. You now, if he what? goes the other route, then it's harder projecting him as a two because he's just not big enough for a lot of twos. A lot of people had Drew Holiday written down. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's in the Marcus Smart vein, I think. Right? Yeah, I feel like Drew Holiday though well, I guess here's... is better offensively. But I don't. I, don't, I actually don't... don't like the Drew Holiday comp. Interesting. Well, I don't want to run too long, but through, quick, real quick, we're getting in the state of the NBA where. A lot of teams don't have a true point guard. And that's, that's what allows Drew Holiday and Marcus Smart to be six three guards and not be ball dominant and not be creating guards to where they can just be three and D type of players. Yeah. Obviously Drew does a little bit more. But that's where I think Casey Wallace can slide into those spots and do that. To where he doesn't have to be even at six three, he doesn't have to have the ball in his hands because if he goes to a team that has, let's just say in theory he goes to the magic, ball Paolo Bancaro is gonna have the ball in his hands. Yeah, eighty percent of the time, like he's just gonna have his hands. So that's where I think you can play off him a little bit more, and I think that's what the NBA is kind of going to in a sense. Obviously, he's gonna have to shoot the ball at a very high rate. Yeah, that's gonna what it's gonna come down to. But I just trust his feel and his uh, smarts. All right, real quick, floor and ceiling. Ceiling, just like generally, or players. Uh, but either whatever. Is... So I I, th- I do think he could make an All Star team at some point. I think that would be kind of tough, but I think. Absolute ceiling, all star. Uh, realistic ceiling. I think he's a long time starter in the NBA. Yeah, which I think would be very good. A floor. I can't see him bottoming out. I don't think. I think if anything, maybe he bounces around. Like maybe a. I don't know if this is good, but Malik Beasley. I I had my comp for floor was late career Rajon Rondo. (laughs) That's sick. That's (laughs) sick. That is disgusting. Uh, but anyway, I just, I could see him bouncing around, but I can't see him falling out of the league. I don't think. No, I agree. My my uh, ceiling is like all defensive type guy. I think he'd be all all defensive team guy. Drew Holiday. Well, sure, but yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that's all we have for y'all today. Hope y'all enjoyed um, the episode. Let us know what you think of Casey Wallace down below. We got to watch his brother a lot at UTSA, Keaton Wallace. So shout out to Keaton as well. Mm-hmm. But um. Yeah, we'll be back with more of these in the coming days, so check those out as well.